Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa lauded the relentless efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa in leading the government action plan for the development and prosperity of the Kingdom of Bahrain. In his opening speech before the first session of the sixth legislative term of the General Assembly, His Majesty the King stressed that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince is an outstanding leader of Team Bahrain, which accomplished concrete achievements that have and will continue to fulfill the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King in various fields. His his Majesty the King noted that the outcomes prove the success of the leadership, the successful leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in dealing with various issues. His Majesty further affirmed that the Kingdom has managed to overcome the corona pandemic under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister that was internationally commended. His Majesty added that His Royal Highness's keenness on developing and upgrading the government work system and enhancing Bahrain in all economic and social aspects has reassured that the kingdom is one of the on the right path and is there uh, and if there is a challenge team bahrain will face it under the leadership of his royal highness the oil and gas sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain has many achievements that were and still are capable of consolidating and developing the oil economy and accomplishing its sustainability by strengthening the national partnership with all other sectors, which creates broader horizons of opportunities despite the success of economic diversifications. The oil and gas sector remains a strong component of Bahrain's economy. The country's balanced and flexible policies have contributed to strengthening the role of the fourth industrial revolution in the oil and gas sector by strengthening Bahrain's position as an important center for the exhibition industry and related events. The oil and gas sector contributed to ensuring the sustainability of the strategic stockpile to serve future needs and the requirements of comprehensive development and the sustainability of its resources in order to consolidate growth, secure financial and economic stability and support the sovereign fund for the benefit of the country and its citizens. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna bint Ahmed Ramiyahi, has said that the Kingdom's experience in expanding the partnership with the private sector to provide housing services to the citizens has proved its success. While leading the Kingdom's delegation to the 39th session of the Council of Arab Ministers of Housing and Construction hosted by Egypt, Mr. Ramiyahi asserted that over the past years, the Kingdom has managed to provide thousands of housing units to the citizens in partnership with the private sector, which has encouraged the government to launch the new housing financing program and the government land development rights program. Program. She hailed the experiences of the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC and Arab countries that have adopted a similar approach in providing housing services to their citizens. The minister appreciated the Arab Ministerial Council's endorsement of a proposal to exchange experiences among member states which will contribute to strengthening and enriching housing plans with successful ideas and initiatives. During the training, CORE's representatives of countries will be trained on the mechanism of listing data on the website of the Council of Arab Ministers of Housing and Construction. On the sidelines of her heading the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the 39th Ministerial Meeting of the Council of Ministers of Housing and Construction Arabs and the 7th Arab Housing Conference in Cairo, Minister of Housing and Urban Planning Amna bin Ahmed Ramehi held a working meeting with the Director of the Regional Office for the Arab States of the United Nations Human Settlements Program of the United Nations Habitat, Erfan Ali. During the meeting, ways to enhance cooperation with the Regional Office for the Arab States of the United Nations Human Settlements Programs were discussed, especially with regard to efforts implementing the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Noting the tremendous progress made by the Kingdom in various fields, which was included in the reports of the UN. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning reviewed the Kingdom's efforts to provide social housing for citizens and what it includes of developmental policies and plans aimed at providing sustainable and immediate housing services to citizens through partnership programs with the private sector, noting the new housing financing programs that the Ministry recently launched aimed to diversify options and increase the supply of housing units for citizens benefiting from financing services, noting that these policies keep pace with Bahrain's economic vision 2030. Preparations are being stepped up to host the International School Games Bahrain 2024 under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. 5,000 students representing more than 80 countries from all over the world are expected to compete in 25 sports. The organizing committee have earmarked 14 sites to host the International School Games Bahrain 2024. The executive committee discussed issues related to the promotion of the tournament to ensure successful organization. The technical committee outlined the plan to use the earmarked sites 
Prize, stressing the importance of undertaking all preparations for the tournament. The Games will last for 10 consecutive days and 5,000 students participating from over 80 different countries. He stated that the gymnastics side will also include 25 different sports and that 14 sites have been allocated to host these different games. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expresses the thanks and appreciation of the Kingdom of Bahrain for the supportive stances announced by the number of Gulf Arab and Islamic organizations and human rights organizations rejecting the resolution issued by the European Parliaments regarding the situation of human rights in Bahrain. The organization praised the important achievements made by the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of protecting and promoting human rights in line with international standards. While the Ministry appreciates the legislative role of the European Parliament in the European system as political duties, it expresses deep regret that the decision issued by the European Parliament is supported by elements affiliated with external parties which provided the European Parliament with false, inaccurate and misleading information with the aim of discrediting the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of human rights and it was issued immediately after the Parliament began investigating corruption cases and receiving money that occupied public opinion and uh, that the European international media and accused a number of parliamentarians who have relations with the state of Qatar. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs stressed the need to adhere to the principles of the Charter of the United Nations, in particular respect for the principles of good neighborliness and non-interference in internal affairs and the importance of the role of the Gulf Cooperation Council in achieving stability and prosperity in the region by preserving Gulf cohesion, adhering to the principles stipulated in the al ula Declaration and uh, devoting efforts to strengthening the unity of the Gulf ranks for the good and interests of its countries and its people. The Kingdom of Bahrain enjoys distinctive diplomatic relations with brotherly and friendly countries and made remarkable achievements in diplomatic work thanks to the moderate approach of His Majesty the King and his far-sighted vision. More in this report. His Majesty's distinct diplomacy and moderate approach positioned the Kingdom of Bahrain at the forefront of countries, making it an object of appreciation and attention of the whole world. During the opening of the first session of the sixth legislative term of the National Assembly, His Majesty the King reaffirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's support of everything that spreads peace, coexistence and brotherhood among people, underlining the importance of dialogue as the best way to resolve conflicts and achieve rapprochement between countries and peoples. Bahrain's diplomacy succeeded in deepening relations and cooperation with countries across various fields, and through its membership in the Gulf Cooperation Council, the League of Arab States, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and the United Nations, Bahrain exemplified its moderate approach, which gained international recognition and appreciation. The success of the Kingdom of Bahrain in hosting international conferences, such as Bahrain Forum for Dialogue, East and West for Human Coexistence, confirms Bahrain's position as an attractive and influential environment that supports global efforts to combat extremist thoughts and as an oasis of peace and coexistence. The signing of the Abraham Declaration represents yet another great diplomatic achievement, ushering in a new era of peace and giving the young generations hope for a brighter future. The Kingdom of Bahrain has adopted peace and tolerance as a policy, which was clearly demonstrated by the establishment of King Hamad Center for Peaceful Coexistence, which plays a fundamental role in showcasing the advanced model of Bahrain and cementing its position as a pioneer of global coexistence and human fraternity. Bahrain's stances towards Arab regional and international issues and its moderate approach ends at its pioneering standing and in international respect. The Parliamentary Division Delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain participated in the joint meeting of the Shura Parliament and Councils and Assembly of the Gulf Cooperation Council States with the head of the delegation concerned with relations with the Arabian Peninsula in the European Parliament, Dr. Hannah Neumann, and her accompanying delegation. The meeting was held in Riyadh in coordination with the General Secretariat of the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf and the European Union Delegation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Bahrain's delegation was headed by a member of the Shura Council, Dr. Tissam. Mohammed Saleh Dallal. 
The Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Tel Aviv held a reception marking Bahrain's National Day. Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the State of Israel, Khalid al Jalahma, extended his warmest congratulations and blessings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The ambassador praised the Bahrain Israel relations, which have witnessed remarkable developments since the announcement of the Abraham Principles Agreement, stressing the importance of reaching a just and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian issue due to its importance to the Islamic and Arab nations, stressing at the same time that reaching a just and comprehensive solution to the issue will contribute stability in the region in general. The attendees expressed their warmest congratulations and blessings on this occasion, wishing many happy returns to the leadership of the Kingdom of Bahrain and to the people of Bahrain more progress and prosperity under the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. The Deputy Chief of Mission at Japan Embassy to Bahrain, Koji Naito, spoke to us during which he congratulated the Kingdom of Bahrain and its leadership on Bahrain's National Day. Mr. Naito also commended the growing trade relations between Bahrain and Japan, in which His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on this joyous occasion. Much luck. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of Japanese people and the government, I'd like to express my heartfelt congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad, His Royal Highness Prince Salman, and the people of Bahrain on its National Day 2022. This year, Bahrain and Japan celebrated the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations. When it comes to this year's personal exchanges between the two countries, his Excellency Mr. Honda, the Japanese Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs, visited Bahrain in June, and both countries concluded the Investment Protection Agreement. In September, the Bahraini dele delegation headed by His Excellency Dr. Sheikh Abdullah, uh, Foreign Ministers and the Secretary for Political Affairs, including Bahraini key business figures visited Japan to attend the political consultation meeting between the two countries. The both sides discussed the way to promote activities on all fields, especially in the field of economy. Also in September, under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman and His Excellency Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, Foreign Minister, visited Japan to attend the state funeral for the former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. This thoughtful gesture has deeply impressed Japanese nationals and contributed greatly to the de development of friendly relationship between the two countries. Our relationship goes back to the first Bahraini oil shipment to Japan in 1934. Since that time, our friendly and stable relationship has continued for almost half a century, and I'm sure it will move on to a next fruitful phase. At the end, we hope to work closely with the Bahraini government and all Bahraini people to realize a secure and peaceful future with prosperity for our countries and for the entire world. The Ambassador of Indonesia to Bahrain, R.D. Hermawan, gave a statement in which he congratulated the Kingdom of Bahrain and the leadership and commended bilateral relations. His Excellency wished His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister best wishes for the National Day. On behalf of the President Joko Widodo, the government and the people of the Republic of Indonesia, I congratulate the people and the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain in commemorations of the 51st Bahrain National Day. It is an opportunity to recognize the histories and the achievement of our bilateral relations, as well as the shared values, cultures, and belief between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Indonesia. Our sincere appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for the guidance and stewardships, especially during the difficult time of pandemic, so that the Indonesian community who reside in Bahrain feel safe living in this beautiful country. 
I commend His Majesty and His Royal Highness for the unwavering support towards the enhancements of the relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Indonesia. We look forward to work closely with the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness with all Bahrain people to assure a prosperous and peaceful future for our nations. Once again, congratulations and best wishes on the 51st Bahrain National Day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, protect, and guide His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Information Ministry has announced that its festival held at the Heritage Village in Ras Hayyan will run until Saturday, December 24th as a result of the high turnout of visitors. The festival is part of Bahrain's festivities to mark its international days in commemoration of the establishment of the Bahrain state as an Arab and Muslim country founded by Ahmed al-Fatih in 1783 and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. The festival features a lineup of artistic and entertainment activities and events, as well as traditional markets reflecting an important aspect of the authentic Bahraini heritage and identity.